I went up. Galatians 2 2. I went up by revelation. His heart was not right. His heart was always after money. My master speared the Syrian. I will run after him. He didn't walk in his hand. Whatever won't let these keys walk in your hand be set free from it. Whatever will render this truth impotent in your life be delivered from it. Yeah. Obedience is our strongest weapon in the kingdom. So when your obedience is fulfilled, you will avenge all disobedience. You will bring them under your feet by your obedience. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. But the weapons of our warfare, they are not kind of, but they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exhausts against the knowledge of God, and into captivity, every thought of the obedience of Christ. So that when, and having all in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. That's our strongest weapon. That is the stronghold of the faith. Obedience. Then his instruction to walk in your life. As a covenant keeping God, where you do your part, you have committed his integrity to do his part. In Jesus' name, no church will suffer the siege of stagnation again. That church will not only be growing while you are here on the earth, the rate will keep increasing till Jesus comes. Amen. Nothing makes great like grace. But grace multiplies by knowledge. And what I am, Paul said, by the grace of God. But I labor more abundantly than them all, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. So every greatness in the kingdom has its root in grace. But grace multiplies by knowledge. Second Peter 1, 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1. That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. That's what defines apostolic ministry. You find them retreating on their encounters, the outcome, and how it came to be. Which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your own joy may be full. They are not expressions of man's capacity. They are just the unfolding of God's grace and how to engage with it. In my little adventure, I've seen 107,000 people added to church on one Sunday by the grace of God. Two weeks ago, we had 63,000 people added to our church over the previous Sunday. It's real. Do you know why that is happening? We are in the era of multitudes in the body of Christ. We need to have understanding of the time so we can engage with it practically. We are in the era of multitudes in the body of Christ. You know, for everything under the sun, there's a time and there's a season. Please engage with this opportunity. We are either in the middle or the tail end of the last days. Whichever it is, we are right there in the center of the last days. It shall come to pass in the last days. Micah chapter 4 verse 1 and 2, that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations will flow into it. Peter said, this is that which was spoken, that in the last days, I will put my spirit upon all flesh. So last days began 2,000 years ago. Body here that is given a church ministry is ordained to be a partaker of this era if he knows what to do and commits to doing it. If he knows what to do and commits to doing it, every single pastor here, because we are last day pastors and we are living 
in the era of multitudes in the body of Christ. Some years ago, if you have 500 people in a conference, I mean, you see the whole world came. The place was vibrating. Now, those days you don't need microphone to speak to anybody because there is no crowd that needs microphone to hear you. But everybody came. I mean, the place was teeming with crowd. How many were there? 400. But when you say a church 500, when did it start? Last year, I know it, it should be out of that place now. It should have gone higher. We didn't have such things. So it's not about anybody's skill and expertise, but a raw manifestation of God's agenda. The growth we're experiencing now is a raw manifestation of divine agenda. And how much you committed yourself to it is what brought you to where you are now. If you commit yourself, the more you find more grace manifesting. The children of Isaac or the sons of Isaac, they were those who have understanding of the times and the seasons. First Chronicles 12 and verse 32. The end time church shall begin to experience supernatural multiplication. And the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. Great multiplications. Two Sundays ago, next 68 of the converse of my team came to church. Now, between January and now, by obeying God and providing exemplary leadership and to please the one who called me, we had over 2,600 plus people that came into church through our outreaches. You see, what it takes is get to know what to do and be committed to doing it. The harvest is overripe. Just a little shake of the tree and the fruit will fall. And if you look at it, you see the multitude ministry of Christ all through the pages of scriptures. And all the multitude resorted unto him. Mark 2, 13. All the multitude. He was a commander of multitudes. And as the Father has sent him, so as he sent us. He's the good shepherd. So when we become good on the job we are sent to do, multitudes will follow. He didn't stop there. We saw him commanding great multitude. Then he went further to a very great multitude. A very great multitude. The multitude being very great. Mark 8 and 1 to 3. Then he moved forward to innumerable multitude. The word of life that has entered into you will be like fire shut up in your bones. It will keep you in motion tirelessly. It will keep you in motion tirelessly. You'll be engaging with it as a mission from heaven. Amen. Why are we doing that? We are simply partnering with Jesus. He does not want anyone to perish, but at all to come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, 9. He wants all men saved because he died for all men. And also souls have the same word with God. Educated, illiterate, black, white, Every soul has equal worth in the sight of God. And why am I doing this? Because Jesus is the chief cornerstone and the apostles are the foundation. That's what to build on. Jesus operated the multidimensional ministry of multitudes. The apostles follow suit. And so that is what God has ordained for us to follow. The apostles operated in the realm of multitudes after Jesus left. We are in that era. Don't give room to distraction. Stay focused. Engage the keys. Every pastor that we command supernatural church growth must align with the following scriptural demands. The moon has no light of its own. It simply aligns at a particular angle to the sun. And what we call the moonlight is a reflection of the light from the sun. So the sun generates all the heat. The moon simply reflects the glory. Jesus is the son of righteousness and is the living word. When we align with what the world says to do, we simply reflect the glory from the sun that generates the heat. And now it's, oh, beautiful moonlight, beautiful moonlight. It's never scorchy. It's pleasant. It's pleasurable. It's soothing. Your life is not ordained to generate temperature and blood pressures and hypertension. No. Whatever it says to you to do, do it. 
you just reflect the glory. He is the one generating all the heat, and you are simply reflecting the glory. Where must I stand to command supernatural church growth? One, any pastor that must experience supernatural church growth must be strong in the Lord. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, Ephesians 6.10. Be rooted and grounded in God. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be removed but abide forever. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Let the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Be strong. Build spiritual strength. Greatest enemy of church growth is the devil himself. What brought Goliath down was the spiritual strength of David. Everybody was jittery. But David said, the Lord who gave me the lion and the bear, he will give me this uncircumcised Philistine today. He said, wait a minute, I will bring you down and cut your head from you and nobody will carry your body. And in the power of his mind, because you will you'll be confronted by devils in your drive. And those who do know their God, they shall be what? Be strong. And they shall do exploits. This kind went not, but by prayer and by fasting. Why could we not move that devil that is blocking the way to continuous growth to this church? This kind went not, out, but by prayer and fasting. The child grew and worked strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing to Israel. You need to build strength. To fulfill God's mandate on your life. You, you need to build. Look, grandma won't do nothing. Every pastor that must experience church growth must have a clear vision for church growth. As far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. Where there is no vision, the struggle continues. But he that keeps to the pursuit of his vision in God, Happy is it. Be strong in the world. So many may keep, may bring people to church, only the word of life can keep them there. I'll give you pastors of my own, after my own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3, 15 and 16. It shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days. <laughs> Feeding the flock with knowledge and understanding will always culminate in supernatural growth. And the word of God increased and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. So every pastor that must experience continuous church growth, supernatural church growth, must keep building their word level.